All right, guys, so welcome back. So we're going to now consider, guys, a completely different topic uh, in BMAT section one, the critical thinking part. We're now going to focus on the floor type questions. These floor type questions, guys, um, they can be quite challenging for some people, but hopefully with the explanation we're going to provide in these series of videos, it should all make sense. It comes up quite common, but not as um, common as, you know, your conclusion type or your assumption type questions. But without further ado, guys, let's go through this. So we're going to first consider IMAT 2019, and this is question two. So it says, increasing the quality of a teacher and of his or her lessons is to be judged by feedback from their pupils. This is dangerous as pupils have a tendency to focus too much on whether or not they enjoy the lesson, in other words, on how much fun they found. Um, the purpose of education, however, is not to keep children entertained. It is not to make their lives more fun. Arguably, it is not even to make them happier per se. The purpose of school is to make their pupils better, more educated people. This is all that matters and therefore it is whether the teacher succeeds at this, not at being a uh, children's entertainer that counts. And so which of the following is a flaw in the above argument? So guys, pause the video, give yourself for just over a minute. Be sure to be back after that, where we're going to consider the solution. And if this is your first time, guys, um, looking at a flaw question, just carry on watching where we can go through um, the full solution. Okay, so in the BMAT, guys, um, for flaw type questions, more often than not, I'll probably say like 70 to 80% is going to be of two types. The flaw is either going to be an assumption, which we've done a lot in the previous video, so have a look at that um, if you haven't done so already. Or um, it's also going to be of the argument that you've probably seen this a lot in, in your A-levels, this idea that correlation uh, does not mean causation. And basically, guys, the author, what he's trying to say over there is that, you know, he's trying to say, for example, um, there's a new McDonald's shop in this area and there's also an increase in the rate of obesity. Therefore, the McDonald's is causing that. So you're, you're, you're saying that one thing is causing the other thing just from the mere fact that they're correlated, but that's not true. So most of the time it's going to be one of these two. So what I'm saying, guys, is that when you're dealing with these floor type questions, I'll say a good thing to do is just be aware of the conclusion and some of the reasons back in it. And then, you know, you can um, find a common link um, and find the assumption. So I'm not going to fully go through, you know, finding the assumption because this is in an assumption type question, but that would actually be a useful exercise for you guys to do. But in this argument over here, the the um, conclusion is quite clearly there. So therefore, is whether the te teacher succeeded at this, not being a child that counts. So basically, the conclusion um, in this passage, guys, is saying that what makes a good teacher is that it, it, it is whether you know they're better educated rather than a better um, entert entertainer, right? And some of the reasons it's saying, um, you know, the main reason you go to school is to learn and you know not to um, be entertained. Right, so obviously what, what you're assuming there is that entertainment doesn't cause, um, you know, students having fun. So let's go through this. This is by simply assuming that the purpose of education is not even to make people happier, the argument rests on a questionable contention. So this is pretty just random, guys. And the more you do, guys, the more you get a feel for why this kind of um, thing is irrelevant. So this is completely irrelevant. Um, B, it doesn't specify precisely what it means by making someone a better, more educated person. So what if it, um, um, does that? it doesn't add any more substance to the argument? So it can't be this one. Um, C, the comparison with being a child entertainer is an unfair exaggeration of what a teacher tries to do um, by making lessons more fun. I mean, even if they didn't really use the word of an entertainer, even if just just use the word, for example, uh, an amuser or something, it doesn't really change anything, right? This is how you should think as with the floor type questions. So it can't be this one. Uh, so it's going to be that enjoying lessons could result in people's ending up better educated. So that was basically the assumption, isn't it, guys? So clearly, guys, this is going to be a really good option. So let's see if we can find an even better option with um, E. It patronizes young people by thinking that their judgment will be based solely on how much fun um, they found the lesson. Uh, again, so we're not really concerned about, you know, um, the young people. We're more concerned about the output of the teacher, hence why this is basically irrelevant. So here, guys, hopefully you can understand that the D, the assumption, which is more often not going to be your winner. So this is our winner, guys. D is the answer. And hopefully, you guys, that has made sense. And as always, I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys. So previously, you were looking at this question. I'm at 2019, question two, the first type of floor question. Hopefully, guys, we were able to break the ground and we were able to give some of the key tips of answering these um, floor questions just through this one question. Uh, so now, guys, let's move on to the next question, which is I'm at 2018. And this comes in the way of question 11. This is one of the population with the highest level uh, life expectancy is Iceland. The people that are very healthy, as indicated by the lowest incidence of diabetes, obesity, heart disease, and diet-related cancers. The diet is rich in good quality local fish and meat and dairy products from grass-fed animals. 
the fish and meat is all caught, produced and processed on a small scale. If you want to live a long and healthy life, we should adopt the Icelanders diet. Which of the following is the best statement of the flow in the above argument? So guys, pause the video, give yourself just over a minute. Be sure to be back after that where we're then going to go through the solution. All right, guys, so welcome back. So remember, guys, what I told you to do in the previous question, just highlight what the conclusion is in this case, and you can more or less figure out um, what the uh, assumption is, because most time, more time than not, the assumption is essentially the flaw. So clearly here, guys, this is going to be our conclusion, isn't it? I don't want to go through and make the, um, um, the video rambly. Um, if you want to, you know, um, go in detail and look at, you know, find the most opinion sentence and through that find a, a, a conclusion, I really encourage that because I would actually improve your conclusion skills. But I want to make this really quick and snappy and onto the point because we're dealing with floor type questions in this. So the conclusion here is that if you want to live long and healthy lives, we should adopt the Iceland diet. And some of the reasons back is because Iceland has one of the um, lowest incidence of, uh, of these diseases, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, etc. But clearly here, the assumption basically is that you're assuming that it is purely that thing. So this diet, which is causing that. You don't know, for example, it could just be that people from Iceland exercise more. So you haven't taken that thing into account. So remember, this is the idea that correlation doesn't cause causation. So remember, I, I actually, before in the previous um, snap or in the previous uh, video, um, talked about assumptions and correlation doesn't equal causation. They're very interlinked, uh, really. Um, so let's go through this, uh, um, the options. There may be other reasons for the Icelanders' health and longevity. That's basically what we said. This is a very good option. To be honest, I'm pretty confident this will be the answer, but we'll just go through the other ones for completeness. Um, people not like people may not uh, like being told uh, what they should eat. So what? It doesn't really, if people don't really like it, it doesn't really um, negate the argument saying that, you know, if you want to live longer, we should uh, have this diet. It doesn't really add anything. So it can't be this one. The Iceland diet may be primitively expensive elsewhere. Okay, so what if it's ex expensive elsewhere? This is just, it's basically just trying to put forward that, you know, if you want to do this, you have to do this, regardless of how much money you have. So it can't be this one. There may be insufficient space in many countries to raise grass-fed animals. Again, it doesn't really add any substance to the argument. It's just saying, you know, you have to do this. If you can't do it, you have to, you know, find other sources, perhaps. So it can't be that. Vegetarians may not be able to live on an Icelandic diet. Again, so what? It doesn't really negate what it's trying to say that, you know, if you want to live long, you have to adopt this diet. So this was quite clear, guys. Um, a, in this case, was uh, the winner. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, we were looking at this question, talking about the Icelanders diet and how it might um, be beneficial um, to live long, happy lives. Uh, hopefully, guys, that question has made sense. And hopefully through this, we saw the other um, angle of these floor questions where cor a correlation doesn't equal causation. Um, uh, it becomes relevant. Let's go to the next question, guys. Question 12. This is recent research in the USA has found that areas with more dentists per person have much lower rates of obesity than neighboring areas of similar population size. Clearly, public health authorities concerned with obesity rates should focus more resources on the provision of dental care. Dentists are a neglected asset in the struggle against the serious health problem associated with obesity. Which one of the following is the best statement uh, of the flaw in the above argument? So guys, pause the video, give yourself just over a minute, be sure to be back after that, and then um, we can go through the solution. All right, guys, so welcome back. So remember, what you're going to aim to do is find the conclusion here. Um, so it, clearly, we have um, very... Uh, conclusion indicating words so you should focus you need to do this you have to do this so this is going to more that, that sentence is more or less uh, going to be our conclusion so public health authorities concerned with obesity should focus more resources on uh, on on dentistry more or less and some of the reasons say is because um it's basically saying areas where there's more dentists per person have lower rates of obesity right so clearly guys the assumption here is that you're assuming that the dentist is causing the lower rates of obesity for example, you don't know, for example, if there's more dentists per area, that could also mean, for example, there's more sports facilities per area. And, this, uh, you know, the contribution in sports might be causing the lower rates of obesity. So this is very similar to the previous question. OK, so let's look at this. It assumes dental care in the USA is somewhat similar um, to that found um, elsewhere. So that's clearly not the assumption. The assumption is that A is causing B, the dentistry, better dentistry is causing e, the lower rates of obesity. Uh, it assumes that obesity should be a priority concern for uh, public health authority that's clearly not assumption we already distinguished the assumption ignores factors that might prevent public health authorities from spending more on obesity uh, and related conditions so this is just telling you you have like you is sh advised you should do this it doesn't really even if you don't really have the money to do that it's still just putting forward the idea that it's a, it's a good idea so this doesn't really add anything it ignores the fact that help and advice concerning obesity can be delivered in a variety um of ways so it's not really talking about um it's more talking it's not really concerned about 
it's not really ignoring the fact that you know there's you can provide for it's just giving you a way to you know cure obesity through dentistry so i don't think this is the one uh, it seems that the high number of dentists causes lower rates of this is clearly one isn't it guys because it's assuming correlation uh, equals causation so that's clearly going to be our winner here guys and e therefore is going to be the correct answer so hopefully guys that's made sense and as always we look forward to seeing you in the next video